WVUAFM, Tuscaloosa. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of the Fourth and Goal Podcast, WVUAFM 90.7's number one podcast for all things college football. This week, uh, we're back from spring break, and we are going to give our SEC preview. First off, guys, Brayden, Nick, how was spring break? It was good. It was, it was excellent. <laughs> I watched some ball over the week. Yeah, it's a big basketball filled spring break for sure. Great. great to see us still in the tournament, hoping we can keep that going as long as possible. Yeah, as of the time we're recording this, um, it's the day the day before we play San Diego State in the Sweet 16. So hopefully uh, when we come back in two weeks, if we come back in two weeks, it'll be national, well, national champions. Champions. Four, yeah, right? No, national no, champions. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. Which is national championships next week. So yeah, hopefully by the time we are back in the in the studio, we will be national champions in basketball. That's pretty ridiculous to think about. But anyways, we're gonna start this SEC preview with over under win totals for each team. So obviously, as people know in the sports book world, um, teams get set with a line going into the season. That can be a line set to maybe like say we're gonna have like ten and a half for Alabama and you know betters get to pick over and under so we're going to play a little game here i'm going to give out the line for each team's regular season win total and brayden and nick are going to answer so here we go we're going to start with our very own alabama crimson tide they have a very tough schedule this year i'm setting the line at 10 and a half brayden start us off i'm going to say over even though we don't really totally have our quarterback situation filled out i say that we have an 11 win season especially because a lot of those games that are tough at home. Again, we have a few games that, you know, Texas, Texas A&M and Auburn that all are like, could be sneaky upset potential games with a lot of them being, uh, those with Auburn and A&M being on the road. Um, Oof. Boys ain't warm yet. Yeah. Yeah. Um, But I think that, uh, I think that it's not unreasonable to say that we win 11 games next year at all, especially after this year where we only won 10. And it seems that, we have so many guys returning and a good future looking in our quarterback and offense. I'm going to have to disagree. Even though I hope I'm wrong, under. I think we go 10-2. and two. Probably losses to Texas a and Auburn just with the inexperience at QB. I know Joe Milrow has played at QB. And Ty Simpson coming in. I mean, even Bryce Young during his Heisman year lost to Texas A&M on the road. I mean... That place is hard to play, one of the toughest environments. And then you had to go to Auburn. It took four overtimes to beat a 6-6 six and six Auburn team. I mean, much better coach, probably much, much better, better system. Team. Yeah, and all, all, Hugh Freeze has had the number against Nick Saban. So if those are two, I mean, it could could see us losing to Texas at the beginning of the season, and then we switch it up at QB. But I don't know. It just depends what the quarterback situation is heading into the season. It might change. It's at the like spring ball. is going to let spring ball go through. Yeah, I think this is one of the um, highly like the most questioned Alabama teams we've had in recent memory. Like, it, there's just a lot of questions that haven't been answered over the off season or are yet to be answered. And also, unfortunately, it's probably going to be the toughest schedule they've had, at least that I can remember in a long time. Um, we have Tennessee and Kentucky on the road yeah, I out pretty, of the east. We have uh, Texas, Texas is at home. Yeah, I know, but I mean, like Kentucky oh, on the yeah. road. Yeah. yeah. Who will forget Kentucky? Yeah, Kentucky on the road late Kentucky. in the year. That's tough. Yeah. Texas, even though it's at home, LSU at home, and then like Braden said, Tennessee at home. And then you can't even you can't count out Ole Miss Miss State. And then obviously Auburn at Auburn and that game can kind of go either way when it's played at Jordan Hare. Um but the Alabama fan in me just I just refuse the spoiled Alabama fan in me just refuses to believe that this team will go will underwhelm in our books, which is a t- ten and two season which is crazy, but I refuse to believe that they'll do that again. I think I think with the hard games we have being played at home is going to help us so much because uh, the games we've lost lo- last year, you would think on a neutral site and or uh, at home we probably win some of those games, especially the Tennessee game. I am going to take the Alabama over. I do think we drop a game, but I think 11-1 and one this year for Alabama. So our yeah. next, te- next team we got Arkansas. Uh, the line's seven and a half. Obviously, their SEC West is going to be a tough time no matter who it is playing. 
Um, and yeah, I like seven and a half for Arkansas. Braden, what do you think? I'll stick them right up on the other. I'll say that they're a seven win team. They, you know, that's a great line for Arkansas. It's they're a very questionable team. I feel like every single year there's always some anticipation. They're always out of the gate strong, um, and they usually finish relatively well too. Um, like this year, I mean, they went all the way up into the top ten. You know, with Jefferson and. You know, they started falling back after the loss to us in Arkansas. But, uh, I mean, I think that there are seven, eight win teams. Seven and a half is pretty much the perfect line for that, though. Yeah, I agree. I'm going to go under, I think, seven and a five. And if he goes six and six, I think Arkansas is going to want to fire Sam Pittman. His seat's getting a little warmer, especially in Fayetteville. Especially coming, I mean, they went out of the way to the top ten, and then what? They finished like seven and five, eight and four. This past yeah. year, seven and five. I mean, I know their schedule's tough. I mean, you got to go through Alabama, SEC West, every season. So that's not ideal, but I don't know. Maybe KJ Jefferson has a big year this year. Yeah, then, maybe. Yeah, but um, it, it just depends on the toss-up games. Like the toss-up will probably be a And M game, LSU game. If they can actually LSU game be on the red. A And M game is a neutral side game, so that'll probably be the toss-up game. If they win that game, they'll probably go over. If they lose that game, they'll probably go under. Yeah, this is an Arkansas team that is just uh, – the last few years have kind of felt like the same pattern. Like Braden said, they sneak into the top ten early in the year, and then it feels like they almost start playing the really deep teams in the SEC West and just slowly fall off like as the year goes on. So um, I think that kind of does put Sam Pittman on the hot seat. Luckily for Arkansas, their um, non-conference schedule is not hard at all. Their only game that is even going to be questionable is having BYU at home. Uh, they're in the second year of that home and home with uh, BYU. They do have LSU on the road, Texas A and M, and then out of the East, they drew. They have Florida and Missouri. Florida's on the road. That's going to be a tough game for them. Anytime playing in Gainesville is tough. Um, for Arkansas, I like I like the under just because the West is so tough. I do think it'll be another typical Arkansas season. I think they could they'll start the year three and three and oh and then maybe even four and one five and one and finish seven and five just kind of like how they've been the last few, couple of years it feels like uh next up we have our rivals the auburn tigers um auburn just doesn't have that great of a roster i know that the fans are really set high with the new coach uh in hugh freeze and i i do think he'll be great for them i do think this year though is going to be another down year and i'm not saying that it will be it won't be up in the future, but obviously with the new coach just settling in and playing in a tough conference, I have the line for Auburn set at six and a half, guys. Yeah, I'm going to take the over on that. I think Auburn pulls himself together and gets seven wins, maybe eight. I think that Hugh Freeze and the culture change is just going to be enough for Auburn fans to start showing back up in that stadium, and, and home field advantage is a huge tactic. If they can win four or five of their games at home, and win, you know, two or three of the ones at road, assuming that Georgia and Tennessee are probably automatic losses for them. You know, I, I, and, you know, you can never count out Alabama Auburn, but, you know, Vegas will have Bama favor that game no matter what. So when you look at their favorite games, you know, I, I think that they pulled together seven, eight wins. I'll be taking the over. Uh, Hugh Freeze has just been winning in every place he goes to. Liberty took them. I mean, they beat Arkansas last year. I mean, why can't he do it with Auburn? They got a pretty favorable schedule. I mean, they still have to play Alabama and Georgia, obviously, and Texas a But they got most of their big – all of their big games are at home for the most part besides A&M. I guess they don't have to play. Uh, yeah, they they don't play A&M and LSU, I mean, they'll – I think they'll be a lot better. I mean – uh, Robbie Ashford in year two with Auburn, he's going to be a lot better at quarterback, and I think uh, I think they'll pull. They might pull out between one game between Alabama and Georgia, and they might. I think they'll go seven and five, eight and four, maybe. Yeah. And I've seen so I've seen a couple of things uh, just circling around on like Twitter, Instagram. A lot of Auburn fans are kind of want TJ Finley back at the. Uh, yeah, I've seen, at QB1. I've seen him. He's yeah getting like reps though. I mean, I guess both exactly. players are getting well, reps. So. They hit the transfer portal really hard in, uh, at the O line position. So a lot of people feel like with that improved O line, they don't need as much of an improvising quarterback. Fin- as Finley is Ashford, a decent quarterback. Yeah, I don't think he's bad. Not I don't bad think he's bad. Um, 
And then, as for Braden, Auburn plays your very own California Bears. Your first game of the season. Yeah. Or second game of the season, yeah, at California. Second game, I feel didn't see you. Nah, know. I don't Auburn think wins that game, they're going over. Trap game. Yeah, if Auburn beats yeah. Cal, I, you know, I'm, I'm pretty sure that Cal yeah. is not going to beat Auburn. Yeah, but the cross, hey, cross country at, travel. At it just Cal. seems like their athletic programs are getting worse and worse as the yeah. years go on. Yeah, I'll take the over for Auburn, though. I, I like them winning seven. I don't – I mean, I think eight is a stretch, but – they it always, almost feels like I just don't I don't see them going six and six. Yeah. Either, so I like seven and five for Auburn. Um, as for Florida, we got the line set on a v- even six uh, game. This is a Florida team that's losing a little bit of production on offense. Um, Billy Napier's probably got one of the hottest seats in college football going into the next going into next year, and it doesn't help that two of their first three games are at Utah and then home against Tennessee. So got to open the year on a really tough that schedule. Sucks. So yeah. Six for Florida. Sorry. So the thing, I mean, then you've got Florida State, LSU, but I think that Florida State only drops four or five games. Or sorry, Florida only drops four or five games, especially if Billy Napier really wants to stay in Gainesville. He know, I mean, that team's going to need at least seven or eight wins. I don't know if that's going to happen, but I, I think that they have a schedule that's doable assuming that they lose to LSU Tennessee and I mean Tennessee Florida is never one to count out especially that'll be at home um, and then Florida State too rivalry yeah they got it tough you know, they, it's not a super tough schedule when you nah, compare it's, it it's super to tough. So, so luckily alright so Tennessee and FSU are both in the swamp do you think they win either of those games like, I think they pull away with one of them you think yeah. they get one yeah, I think, I think they, they get one. one really yeah. wow I don't. I don't know. I. I mean, they beat Tennessee Utah last year. They beat Utah last year. They did. Yeah, they, and they did. almost that, beat Tennessee. True. And I think. It, I think it works even better for them getting Tennessee early in the year. Yeah. Because yeah. especially with Tennessee still trying to like just, incorporate Joe Milton. I mean, they had it. What was their recruiting class? Didn't they have a top ten recruiting class this year? Florida. I, mean, I knew yeah, they. I they had they so did. many good and defensive Florida players. Florida is, but Florida is thirteenth in the SEC in returning production. So yeah, but they're going to. I think they'll rely heavily on the recruiting class. I think, yeah, yeah, I think which, so too, probably. I, they've which, had a ton of good defensive players. I think, if I remember correctly, I know they had a ton of like uh, five stars and four star DBs. So I think they're trying to wait with reload because that's the spot they've been really good at the pat like before. Bill and Napier, yeah. they were really good at DB. They were getting a ton of guys in the NFL. But six is just, an, I don't know. It has good. I think I might. I, I kind of like want to see Florida do well. Yeah, college too. football is or Florida is one of those teams that college football is better when Florida. Yeah, good. they have to play the Pac-12 favorite probably and the ACC favorite, which is not good. I'm gonna have. I'm gonna think. I think they're gonna get it's six and six. I'm thinking they're gonna push. Yeah. So Florida, and if you count Georgia, the SEC favorite, so they'll play the, yeah. the SEC Pac-12. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's very tough. You said push. Yeah. Yeah, I, I like think that. Go six and six. I I think push or under. Uh, I'm gonna. I'm actually going to go under. I just – and it doesn't help that they're road games. I just don't see them pulling away. Like, I think hey, they was, lose to Kentucky on the road. I think they lose South to South Carolina. Carolina on the road. I think they lose to LSU on the road. I think they lose to Utah on the road. And then even Missouri. Like, I, yeah. I could see them dropping Missouri on the road. I just don't – I think – this. Is, I don't think they'll be awful, but I I don't think they'll be better than 7 and 5. And – I, I feel more confident about saying they're going to be five and seven than I do seven and yeah. five. So I, I am going to go the under. Wouldn't be surprised if, like Nick said, though they go six, just six, six and six. Yeah, yeah. That's, yeah. That's, that's that's what it feels like. But I don't want to be. Does yeah. Does Billy Napier get uh, the pink slip if they go six and six? I mean, I, I just it depends on how good his freshman he, play. He, exactly, I agree because he did. He does have a very because all the upperclassmen class. are kind of the ones bringing down the team. The freshmen are showing signs of improvement you can't take away the freshman because they're just going to follow him to yeah they'll, he they'll transfer yeah i agree and, I, then, and then the program becomes a three-win program instead yeah. of a, you know i think so. napier's fine unless they do what i said probably won't happen which is like go like four and eight like if they just get embarrassed yeah. or or like utah say like i said they played they utah, need to make tennessee it to early. at least like a bowl yeah. game say like utah tennessee and kentucky like embarrass them in the first five games of the year and they're like two and three and all three of their losses are by like double digits then it's going to be like napier might might be gone yeah if they're getting blown out but if they're playing teams close it's a different story even though florida fans like have a winning culture they just haven't been as good I besides mean, really since i, I mean, mean other were, than the, the year, year they, they were they in the had trask and pitts yeah they haven't really been that good since tebow 
yeah that, no. I mean, that year is the only one I can think of where Florida was like a real legitimate threat yeah um, uh, next up we have Georgia uh, back to back national champions looking for a third I, I'm setting the line at 11 and a half for Georgia they don't have a hard schedule at all they, they play their non-conference schedule is UT Martin Ball State UAB and Georgia Tech and I think one of those was supposed to be Oklahoma, but with them joining the SEC, they backed out or they couldn't they couldn't play that series anymore. But yeah, UT Martin, Ball State, UAB, and Georgia Tech for the back to back national champs. So yeah, and then Auburn, Kentucky, Vanderbilt, Florida, Missouri. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah, uh, Auburn. Like, dude, what are these schedule makers? Uh, yeah. How much they're is not going to get smart paying these guys. Yeah, the media will not Auburn. give. I think we can all agree. The like. media will not give this attention, but. This is the same treatment that Alabama was getting when Alabama would make their schedule like this, and they would get destroyed by the national media. Now Georgia is doing the exact same thing. You don't hear anything about it. Yeah, I want to say that. I want to say yeah. they drop a game though. I yeah, I don't see Georgia going three regular seasons. Yeah, that is true. Without yeah. losing a game, I, I could see this. If drop, this is your schedule, they, though, could, I mean, they like, could. I could see them losing to Tennessee or Auburn. I could lose. Yeah, Tennessee, yeah. Auburn, or even they won't Ole Miss. Miss. I think Ole Miss with a improved offense nah, it's and if, home. yeah by the end of the year though Georgia will have it figured out but if you're going to say Tennessee I think Auburn is their biggest Auburn and Kentucky are the probably the most likely to take look out for down. South Carolina though yeah, that's yeah true. South, South Carolina, Carolina yeah that could oh uh, wait it's I, on I thought isn't it on the road at home. no it's at oh, home yeah if it was at South Carolina I would go under just it's, because it's, I I don't think they could beat South Carolina yeah. and Tennessee on the road in the same year Oh, I forgot they, they played South Carolina. Carolina. See that, that, I mean, I could see them dropping either South Carolina or Tennessee. We're going to look back like, at this, and they're going to be 12 and 8. I, I want to say over. Right I want to say over, and I'm going to stick with it. But like Braden said, like going, this would be three straight undefeated regular seasons. And think, that's like in, that's just I think insane. I, might, I think I might switch my pick to the under. Yeah, well, based no, off yeah, they don't dude, have like, they don't have. Y'all gonna make me talk. Y'all gonna talk me. They out. don't have a quarterback if coming I'm in. If I'm on the casino and it hits red six times in a row, I'm not hitting. Yeah, red I guess again. so. That's, I mean, <laughs> no. When you think about it, think about I mean, it. they're in the midst of a quarterback battle. I mean, we don't know. This could still. I mean, I would have liked if they were opening the season with Clemson like they were the in 2021. It would have been nice. It's nice to see if they had a. QB battle going into that. I mean, yeah, nice to I see think them play. whoever wins that QB battle, they're not. They've lost. I mean, they have. Uh, it's gonna be a new receivers they're gonna have to work with. I mean, still Brock Bauer is best tight end in the country. Yeah, lost mm-hmm. a lot of defensive. T- I think they'll go eleven and one at worst and 12, 12 and out. Yeah, I don't it's see them. It's only eleven and one. I don't see them. There's no way two games. they yeah, went out. Lose two There's games no unless it's in the SEC championship. Unless like, they could be eleven and one going into yeah, like God Atlanta. forbid, like a serious injury doesn't. Happen. Yeah, like, hopefully it doesn't. But like that would be what it takes for them to lose two games, like multiple or just fluke or yeah, or, yeah, or, or fluke. just or just a young team without Stetson Bennett and Jalen Carter and some of these yeah. bigger name Jordan Davis guys that. Uh, you know, yeah, we don't really man. know. We don't really know, like, if they have that guy on defense. I mean, mm-hmm. they they do, but it, you know, we don't know who it is yet. So, what, what, where is their ranking for production wise? Uh, Georgia is Georgia is ninth. That's not in bad. Returning production, defensive production. Yeah, they no. are in the SEC. Yeah, fourth in defensive returning production. So even That's though they really lose like the big names like uh, Keely Ringo, Nolan Smith. And Jalen Carter. Carter, they still are going to have a very good defense. Yeah. Like I mean, that Tomorrow was really essentially just about all yeah. they lost. So, um, yeah, they're still, they're going to be fine defensively, and it's just the scheme that yeah. Georgia plays with yes. is very good. And teams haven't figured it out. So, nope. uh, next up, we got Kentucky. This is going to be a tough one. Um, uh, seven and a half for Kentucky. This is a Kentucky team that plays uh, Alabama, Georgia on the road, and Tennessee. So. Tough, tough schedule for Kentucky, but luckily for them, they their non conference schedule is really weak. Playing Ball State, Eastern Kentucky, Akron, and then Louisville to end the year. And I'm hitting on Jeff Brown's I'm, I'm going to stay. I'm going to say Kentucky stays above seven wins. I think that if we're talking about that could be a sneaky game for either yeah, Tennessee um, or Georgia, they can pull away with one of those. And us, like we're saying, you know, they could beat us. Like yeah, in a, in a I mean, oh, that game, is, probably, that game yeah. is late in the season. It's probably going to be really cold. I mean, November probably 4th. in the 40s. Yeah, it probably won't be too cold, hopefully. Hopefully warm enough for whoever's I'd say 40s, slinging probably. the rock to yeah. 
to do good for us. But I mean, I think Tennessee, I mean, uh, Kentucky's got a good enough yeah. team to go um, eight maybe, wins, not maybe even nine think, wins. That's what I'm thinking. Eight and four, nine and three. I really like what they did with bringing back Liam Cohen, and they have. Devin O'Leary, who was once – I mean, he was supposed to be in this year's draft class, like top 15 pick until he got injured. But I think he's going to get back on the radar for draft. And he's going to have a big year. I think their big if big point in the season will be their second conference game will be Florida at home. Because that usually – because last year that game was a big decider because Florida was on the roll. They were 3-0, and and then they played in the swamp and – lost that game the Florida had all the momentum and they were what like top 15 team in yeah because the they had gotten Utah. hyped up after being Utah yeah. I think they were like 12 and then their season went down the drain after that so yeah I like the over for Kentucky too. I, yeah. yeah if Thor- if Kentucky wins that game I think they'll end up 8-4 and 9-3 yeah. yeah especially because like this I think personally I think they do win at home against Florida and I think they start the year 5-0 and because Ball State yeah. Eastern Kentucky Akron Vandy and Florida. I think they start the year five and zero, and then maybe even six and one going into their bye. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I I think Kentucky wins eight games. I wouldn't even be surprised if they won nine in the only games they lost. I mean, Georgia, they were Tennessee, competing Bama. with they were competing with Georgia last year, and they yeah, that is true. With, I do. I like eight. Sure. I like eight and four for Kentucky though. If I yeah. had to, if I had to guess, um, LSU is next, and they're a very hyped up team going into next year. They have Jaden Daniels returning. <laughs> Elite neighbors wins. and a decent defense as well. I got the line set at ten for LSU. They do have a very tough opening game against FSU, yeah. but other than that, their non conference is a l- their non conference falls off after that. They play Army in the middle of the year. Um, as far as out of the East, they play Missouri on the road and Florida, which are two yeah, very they got manageable now. games. I think they win both of those pretty yeah. easily. What do you guys think? Uh, I'll probably push. I'll probably yeah. say LSU stays at 10 wins exactly. Um, yeah. I'm sure they'll drop a game either, you know, between us, Texas A&M, Arkansas, Mississippi State, Ole Miss. Yeah. Those are all teams that – and Florida State, all yeah. teams that can beat LSU. You know, part of me wants to say that they're going to go nine wins, um, but I do think that they are. I think that they're more likely to be a 10-2 team than a 9-3 team. Again. Yeah. I think they'll go ten and two. I mean, Brian Kelly came in and the team was depleted. They went in the portal, and I mean, he's they went nine and three. Some what they got nine three or ten and two last year. Uh, and a three. Nine and three. Nine and three. That was a g- fantastic j- coaching job. They went on what? I mean, no one expected yeah, LSU no one to make it to that. the championship. Especially of the after after they lost yeah. to Florida State. Yeah, I think I, I, I think Alabama will be beat bad. them this year. A little revenge from last year, and I think. They got a really favorable home schedule. They got a lot of their tough games at home. Besides Alabama, I mean Texas A and M being at home is such a plus for them. Yeah, they need that too because Texas yeah, A and M. I think they're too. Had their number at Cal. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I think, and that's another revenge spot right there too uh, for LSU. I think they will lose to Florida State and Alabama. Yeah, I think I, I'm going to go push as well. I think they go ten and two, um, just because I think they lose to Alabama for sure. But as far as I just don't see them winning Florida like against Florida State and Damn, everybody least, uh, else on their Ole schedule. Miss. Like I, I would have a hard time seeing them going eleven and one with the schedule. Yeah. They could, but I just I don't see it personally. I wouldn't be shocked if they yeah. go eleven and one. Yeah. Um up next we have Ole Miss. Ole Miss is I got them set at seven. They play Mercer to Lane. Georgia Tech and Louisiana Monroe out of conference and out of the East they have Vanderbilt and Georgia. Mm-hmm. So at Georgia, that's Tough. about as big of a automatic L as you can get. They do play at Georgia and at Alabama this year. Uh, t- as always, tough schedule for Tulane. Ole Miss, at like. Tulane is not going to be easy either. Yeah, no, I not at all. I I do think that Ole Miss does go over. I think that they're an eight win team pretty yeah. much every single year. Lane Kiffin's done a really good job over there. Uh, but I don't think that Ole Miss it's just it's just not like the same Ole Miss is always just like in my head a school that like hangs around number 10 mm-hmm. to like just outside the rankings I think that that's probably around well they'll rank at 8 wins maybe they pull off LSU or yeah. you know Texas or you know one of these games that they're not favored in it's very possible um, but yeah it'd be interesting to see where, I think they're one of the more questionable teams with 
how good their offense was last year and their defense was their only par- problem, really. I mean, they were able to compete hey. offensively with most teams. Just the, the defense just couldn't. They got they got Pete Golden coming out to save them. Yeah, yeah. I think I th- I like Ole Miss. I think they'll go over. They're gonna have a better quarterback. I think Spencer Sanders is gonna win the job over Jackson Dart. And Quid John Junkins is gonna have another big year. It's a crazy rushing attack. Yeah. Chad yeah. Johnson Sanders. Yeah, they got to figure out who. I forgot who they have at wide receiver this year. But I think their defense is going to be a big improvement from last year, and I think that's going to help them win some games. That they, I mean, Georgia and Alabama are pretty much L's, most likely. And I think they can maybe pull out LSU, but I think they'll beat Arkansas. I think they're going to go 8-4. They'll yeah. probably lose to Texas A&M. Uh, Texas A&M, uh, Arkansas. Alabama and Georgia. I think I'm going to go with a push for Ole Miss here. I, I like I like them going seven and five just because I think they drop. I think they lose to Bama, LSU, uh, at Auburn, at Georgia, and at Mississippi State in the Egg Bowl. Um, at Auburn may be a little bit of a surprise to y'all, but I just oh, I feel like Auburn's going to get them in They have Texas a and LSU at home. I think that yeah. they lost – they barely beat Texas a last year. I think they'll lose – I think they'll beat him again this year. You think so? Yeah. Yeah, I, I'm going to go with the push on that one. I, I do like Ole Miss going seven and five. Push her over. I don't think they'll yeah. go under. Lane, Lane just got paid yeah, I again. Don't lose, I don't see them going There's six no and six. With all the stuff of him going to Auburn, he's got to back it up and go eight and four, nine and three. He has to. <laughs> with how much money they're bringing in for Lane, they got to. Yeah, we'll see. Um, Ole Miss, just a note, Ole Miss is fourth in returning production yeah. overall in the SEC. That is surprising because usually yeah. Third most, of their guys, most of their guys yeah. are all leaving because it's all um, because he loves the transfer portal. Yeah, he does. He attacks the transfer portal, which he did again this offseason. Yeah, he got a ton well. of. Um, next up is the other end of the Egg Bowl. We have Mississippi State. And Under. Just like Ole Miss, I have their line set to seven. Uh, Mississippi State plays southeastern Louisiana, Arizona, western Michigan, and southern Miss. For their non-conference schedule, I think they went all four of those. I, I think they got Arizona. Um, out of the East, they have South Carolina on the road and Kentucky at home. South Carolina on the road one's going to be tough early in the year. Yeah, yeah I'm going to push here. I think that Mississippi State goes seven wins. Mm, again, good. I mean, there's part of me that wants to say under and over because Mississippi State, again, has just kind of been similar to Ole Miss where they kind of hang around yeah. the 20s. But I think that, you know, with the unfortunate situation of Mike Leach not being there, I, yeah, I don't know if they're going to be that good, as good as they were when he was there. He was such a great coach. Yeah. So uh, I'm I'm, I'm going to push and say that they win seven. I think under. I think six and six or seven and five. I it's a, I mean, it's such a tough time. I mean, they bring in. Hopefully, Zach Arnett does good. I'm I'm going to be I'm rooting for him. But they're going to have a new quarterback in and coming in the air raid. I mean, air raid without Mike Leach. Or um, they might be running something else on them. Hopefully they continue to run the air raid because that is exciting to watch. I love watching the air raid. And I don't know. I think they're going to be – they're not going to have Will Rogers. That's such a big loss because he is a very underrated quarterback in the SEC. And I think whoever takes over for him is going to have big shoes to fill. And I think they're going to lose some games without having his presence. Yeah. Um, I'm a, I'm gonna agree with Nick here. I'm gonna go under. I think they go six and six or five and seven. I think. Yeah. Um, I think this Mississippi State team is gonna struggle a lot. I think they're the they, worst team in the West this yeah, year too. They might lose to Arizona too. Yeah. Uh, honestly, uh, they could. I'm giving <laughs> them the benefit of the doubt Arizona. because it's at home. Arizona's yeah. getting better though. But yeah, Mississippi State's tenth in returning production overall. Yeah. Thirteenth in defensive total pro- and defensive returning production. I think their they, defense is gonna be really bad. I mean, I don't know what they did bringing in Mike Wright at a quarterback he was a running quarterback and he doesn't really fit the air raid scheme yeah, at all I just don't yeah I don't see Mississippi State having a great year uh, like Braden said unfortunately yeah. with the passing of Mike Leach they're going to be adapting to a new coach uh, I, I do think Mississippi State goes 6-6 six and six, maybe even five, probably 5-7 five and seven. I might go 5-7 and seven. I hope I'm wrong though it would be nice yeah. to see yeah. it's always nice to see Mississippi State do good uh, up next we have Missouri and Missouri is l- losing a decent amount uh, well, actually, sorry, Missouri's second in the SEC in returning production. I thought they were losing a lot. They, uh, they did lose their quarterback, 
Yeah. Uh, but their first which the, quarterback they always they used to I think uh, Cook, Brady, Brady Cook, Cook. Yeah, they, they had sure some other not. dude in there I don't remember but was it no you're right I, they did but I I cannot remember his name but yeah you're right I was right. thinking about the wrong dude Connor Bazelak no that's is that it. the right hand yeah that's him Connor Bazelak yeah that's uh, or is that the dude that was at Indiana no Bazelak Bazelak is that's the right guy you had <laughs> sure a, yeah I, I promise you it is I remember that um, yeah, I think they like might be coming back. If he is, then that's great for them. But they still have a very tough schedule. Uh, non-conference, they have South Dakota, Middle Tennessee State, Kansas State, which I think is an L, and then Memphis, which could be another L, honestly, and they play them at St. Louis. Um, and then out of the West, Missouri has LSU. It's probably an L. And at Arkansas, probably an L. So I have the line like, for Missouri uh, set at five. It was like Miami – a Miami quarterback transferred to Missouri a wow. while ago. Which one? Jake Garcia. Uh, Garcia? Yeah. He could be a starter for them. I don't Either know. Man, I think Brady Cook is still the quarterback at Missouri. Oh. well. He, I think it was Connor Bazelak. He played at Indiana. I I think Bazelak played at Missouri. Yeah, he's on the roster for I'm – I'm I think Missouri's going to be good this year. This is the year for uh, Eli Drinkwitz. I don't know. I liked what I saw last year. I mean, they should have been a lot better, but – they finished a year strong. Okay. They did beat Arkansas. So, Connor Bazelak Is that Indiana? Played for – no, no, no. No, no, Get this. He played for Indiana last year. Ah. Uh-huh. Yeah. You were right. He did play for Indiana last year. He played for Missouri the year before that. Yeah. And now he's on Bowling Green. Yeah, <laughs> So, he's nice. the quarterback of Bowling Green now. Wow. I knew he went – he was wow. on Indiana at one point. But I think he probably lost I did job not that notice one. that he played for Indiana. I thought he was Missouri. That's crazy. But yeah, so I guess Brady Cook is the quarterback. So you like the you like the over? It was it at six? Yeah, no, five. Five over, yeah. I'm gonna push here. I think five wins from Missouri. <laughs> they made a bowl game last year. I think they're gonna make a bowl game this year too. Yeah, I mean they could, but I I'm going with the safer bet of just a Missouri. Even though you know they could have could have should have would have beaten Georgia last year, but. I don't know. I, I just don't see Missouri being better than five if they beat, wins. If they somehow beat if they beat Kansas State, then they they're going. Bowling. I agree. I, I think that's. I, I think, think they're going to beat Kansas State. I don't though. think they are. Kansas State's going to beat. Oh, I forgot they have Will Howard. Yeah, Will Howard's coming back. Will Howard is very. Yeah, good. he's very good. Um, or Memphis. Yeah, that's Memphis tough. is going to be a tough game. It too. is. That's what I'm saying. If if they if they win both K State and Memphis, they're going to be good. Big Twelve Memphis. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. That's a power con. That's two yeah. Big Twelve teams they got. That's pretty crazy. Yeah, I, I do like the I like the I almost want to say the under for Missouri. I could very well see them going four and eight, but I, I'll give them the benefit of the doubt. I'll go push. I think they go five and seven. I think they pick up wins against uh, South Dakota and Middle Tennessee State, and then they beat Vanderbilt. Maybe upset Florida. No, no, no. Changing my mind. Going back under. Under, they're going four and eight. I just don't see them winning those games. I, they're going over. Yeah, I, I, I the like production. I, they're going under. Luther Burden. I forgot he's gonna. He's the best wide receiver in the SEC. Luther Burden. Well, they had I Dominic like Lovett transfer. Yeah, but Luther Georgia. Burden's good. Um, next up, we have probably one of the one of the mo- more hyped up teams in the SEC. They got on the hype train a lot at the end of the year last year, beating Tennessee and Clemson. Uh, South Carolina. I have the South Carolina line set for seven and a half. They played North Carolina, Furman, Clemson, and JSU um, as their non-conference schedule. Uh, I think that's actually a pretty decent non-conference schedule. Memphis honestly, is they got two power of conference teams. And then out of the West, they play Mississippi State, which is manageable, and at Texas A&M, a manageable game, but playing at Kyle Field, you know, obviously it's off environment, kind of like I said about the Swamp earlier. Seven and a half for South Carolina, guys. What do you think? Over. Yeah, over for sure. I mean, South Carolina, you know, they beat Clemson. They beat Tennessee. I think that they're just on the rise, especially Spencer Rattler. It just looks so much better at the end of the year. Mm. I mean. Memphis did not get the Big 12, I was wrong. I oh. thought they did. It was UCF. Only. Oh. So, UCF wow. and Cincinnati. Wow. So they won't be playing. We're just getting anything. exposed. We don't know ball. Yeah, we don't yeah, know. It's okay. Anything. And there's oh. so much expansion stuff. We might have to do a new episode, just an episode on expansion itself. I mean, it's wild. You got teams UCLA playing in the but, Big Ten in a few years. That's yeah, gonna be, that just makes yeah. no. I mean, it doesn't even make sense anymore. Yeah. So yeah. far, we'll, we'll, we'll get into that in another episode. Yeah. But <laughs> South but, uh, Carolina, but anyway, over seven and a half. I South like South Carolina, Carolina going sure. over. Smash, yeah, smash it. Spencer Radler is going to go off, put himself 
back into first round discussion. Some team, I mean, everybody's be looking at Caleb Williams, but I mean, some team that falls that's in the twenties or maybe in the top fifteen. I mean, Spencer Rattler is going to be there. Yeah, I mean, he's going to put on a show this year. But it does it's unfortunate they did lose a little bit of their firepower in the transfer portal. I know they lost one of their best. I don't know if it was the best defensive player, but Jordan Birch, who was a five star. Didn't they lose a tight end? They also the, like, won their, yeah, Jaheim Bell. They yeah. lost him to Florida State. I know they lost someone else to Florida State. They mm-hmm. lost a couple guys to Florida State. I know that. Soft. But they saw Spencer out there. When you saw your quarterback in, and you, I think they had a pretty good recruiting class for. And Shane Beamer, man, they beat Tennessee last year. I think they could pull out an upset against one of those teams. I mean, maybe they beat Clemson for a second time this year in a row. Yeah, we'll I, like, see. I like the over a lot for South Carolina. I think they, I think they lose to Georgia, Tennessee on the road, and then I think they drop the Texas A and M game on the road as well. I, I think they go nine and three. Yeah, uh, Clemson game is kind of up for grabs, but so, it, but it's at home. But, but either yeah. way, even if they did lose that, on top of what I think they'll lose, they'll be eight and four, which is the over. I, yeah, I like yeah. I like South Carolina winning eight or nine games next year. I think Spencer Rattler and that offense is going to be really yeah. fun to watch. I think they're. I think I think some of those big games they play, even though they're on the road against Tennessee and Georgia, I think they still must I mean, watch football. Yeah, I mean they went into Clemson last year and just they were behind most of the game, and then they just threw it all over. Yeah, Clemson, great game. So. That's one of the best games of the yeah, regular yeah. season for sure. For sure. Um, we have a few more here left. Uh, we got Tennessee. Tennessee. I have the line set for nine. Obviously, they had one of their best seasons in a long time last year. Uh, even though they lost Hendon Hooker, they're going to look to have a season similar with uh, Joe Milton at the starting QB helm. They play Virginia, That's Austin P, San Antonio, and UConn. Pretty pretty yeah, easy yeah. non-conference schedule. And then out of the West, they play Alabama on the road and Texas A&M at home. I think they're going to go 9-3. and three. It's at 9. I think they're going to either push or go under. I think Joe Milton, he has a great arm. I think – their receivers, they kind of lost a lot of receivers. They're gonna need. Yeah. They're gonna need their transfer receiver. Uh, they got a guy from Oregon, didn't they? Yeah. I think he's gonna have to step up a lot. He's gonna have to. Squirrel White. He's gonna have a big year for Tennessee, but I think their defense is still gonna be exposed. And I don't. I just. They could lose to South Carolina again. I think they could lose. I mean, I don't know that's at home, but they, I don't think they're gonna beat Alabama two times in a row. I mean, it took them ten years. 15 15 years however many years it was to beat them to beat Alabama I don't think they're they could beat Georgia I'm just going to say push or under yeah I mean I'm going to be a push or under I think they're a 9-8 win team I just without uh, Hooker that team looked completely different at the end of the year and obviously through spring ball there's so much development that happens I mean Bryce Young was the biggest one line he was very hard to watch his freshman year came out won the Heisman the next year so Who's who's not to say that Milton can do that? Hey. But uh, but I would if I was a betting man, which I am, I am uh, <laughs> I am pushing on the nine win Tennessee. I think it's yeah. just gonna be dependent on Joe Milton yeah. how he does because he has the arm. They were he looked really good in the Orange Bowl. If we get the Orange Bowl game out of him, then I think they can go ten and two or nine and three. But yeah, I, I they always have a phantom loss. I mean, that South Carolina was about as phantom as it get. I mean, everything that's went wrong for them, and then Hooker injury, and then that Texas A&M game could sneak up on them. Uh, same sure. with and same with Kentucky. Kentucky road, did, yeah. Kentucky the can give them will give them troubles. I think they lose that game to Kentucky. Yeah, I like I like pusher over. I'm gonna go yeah. on the other side of you. I like pusher over for Tennessee. I think they go nine and three at worst. I think they they could go ten and two. I think it'll be. I would put a. I would. Almost guarantee that it's one of those two, though. I think they go nine and three or ten and two. I think yeah. I think it'll be one of those two for Tennessee. I do think they lose to Alabama, and especially because it's at Alabama. And I think they lose to Georgia. I think that'll be a good game, though. Um, I'm gonna say. I, I feel like that. that, that, they, that they feels like that. Like I'm gonna give them I feel their, like that. That's their chance. I think that's yeah. the game that Georgia drops the most. Like, but at the end of the year, Georgia's gonna. Oh, it's easily Georgia's like. Most they're, yeah. game. they're gonna be in like cruise control. They got Vanderbilt the next week if they know they're winning the conference. Yeah. I mean, do they even? I think I'm. A, you know I mean, like, yeah. I think I'm a guarantee a loss to Kentucky and Alabama. But also, when you think about back it, back to back weeks. Okay. Well, if they did beat Kentucky, oh my, right? that's a tough three three games. Yeah, stretch Texas A and M and then two road games back to back at Alabama. Texas A and M and then Alabama, Kentucky on the yeah, road. That yeah, is that's UConn, tough. Missouri on the road. Yeah. UConn's easy. Don't Missouri sleep on, on Jim Moore. Georgia. Vanderbilt. Don't sleep on Vandy, man, either. Yeah, that's I mean, right. We'll get to Vandy here in a minute. But 
Um, even if they did, so say they they went out except for Alabama going into the Georgia game. So say they're going into the Georgia game. I think that would be nine and one. They would be playing Georgia for the SEC East. Yeah, like that. Yeah. That is, I mean, wild to think about. That would be a really. They kind of get. Game. It's nice that they got it towards the end of the year. Missouri gets to get up on them. They yeah. could, yeah. Uh, a lot of the like these two teams, especially uh, when preparing for Georgia, Kentucky, I mean, and Mizzou, could could definitely. It depends. It just the third game of the season is going to be the most important. Yeah, the if, Florida, if they're going to go yeah. over or under, it's going to be dependent on That's a very, that's a very losable game. Yeah, it's a trap. It's, <laughs> it's, it's a trap. about as big of a trap because I mean, depending on how Florida starts, if Florida goes into Utah somehow, I mean, I don't think they're going to win that game. Put up a fight. Yeah. I think they put up a fight, though. Yeah, it just depends who the quarterback is. I mean, Graham Mertz, the guy who's, I mean, he's done good and bad. Yeah, good and bad. We've seen both sides from Graham Mertz. Uh, moving on, though, we have Texas A&M. Um, and what like what more fitting prediction or line for Texas A&M than eight and four? Yeah, they're um, going over. Straight at eight wins. Uh, Texas A&M is returning a lot. I want to say, yeah, they're number one in the SEC in returning production, oh, 80%. They have that over, uh, one uh, in offense and two in defense. I forgot they have that home and home in Miami. Yeah, they do. Oh, so, yeah. so their non-conference is New Mexico, Miami on the road, Louisiana Monroe, and Abilene yeah. Christian. I do think they win all four of those, yeah, even though it's Miami, Miami on the road. I think they'd be Miami does not have a home field advantage. Yeah, Miami. Playing at Miami does they, not matter. Yeah. They play 45 minutes away from the Exactly, campus, from the campus. Same. Yeah. yeah. Out of the Sour East. Sour Van Dyke still at Miami? <sighs> or he did. Yeah, I yeah, think TVD is still there. He had a bad year. Yeah, he, he, bad was, year. he did. I think he's going to bounce back. If only Miami teams played on the Ops. Yeah. That's the best fan support in the world. That's crazy. And then out of the East... Uh, Texas A&M plays Tennessee on the road and South Carolina at home. That's, that's, tough. Tough. that's, that's a tough, really tough draw. Audience. Top three East. Man. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I, I, I'm, oh, pushing. I'm pushing. I'm pushing. I, I'm going I, I don't. I don't think Jimbo is necessarily like going to stay in Texas A&M that much longer. This is but his year. I don't know. Last year was supposed to be his year. Yeah. Tag, everybody's know. down on him this year. This is his year. Four. They go. This is this is. Nah, this and is they his found year their that the Texas oil companies are like, nah, <sighs> they're like, get out of here. Well, they got a quarterback now. I really liked what I saw from Wigman towards the end of the year. I don't know. I, I think, think they, I think eight and four because they got. I mean, they play in the West. I think Ole Miss is going to be better who, than. I think who came back for them. That was uh, like a senior for them. Was it Nia Smith or was it another dude? It was, uh, I, for, I think I keep they end up names. being fourth in the West. One running backs. They stay A chain. He come uh, back. A chain's gone. He's gone. Where? Yeah. A chain NFL. So I think Nia yeah. Smith is back. Yeah. Because it was either him or A chain. Yeah, but they so do a- have one Nia like Smith. one of the best running backs in the entire recruiting yeah. class coming in next year. Look, so. I I think their defense is going to bounce back because their defense was yeah they good they lost Denver well, Harris yeah. that hurts them a little yeah. bit yeah he yeah. You kind of uh, need to get out. LSU, but yeah, they kind of needed a culture change with some of yeah. the stuff that was going on in the locker room there. Uh, that being said, with that culture change, with A and M returning a lot of people, I'm a good go recruiting over. class, I am gonna. I like the over for Texas A and M. I think they drop three games. I think they yeah. lose to Bama, Tennessee, and maybe maybe Soft LSU Atlanta. at LSU. I could see them losing to SC, but I do think I think this will be a year where Jimbo kind of settles everybody down. I think they yeah. go nine and three, maybe. Look. Best case scenario, make a New Year's Six. If they're four and zero heading into Arlington, and that is a big game right there. Oh yeah, for sure. And then even Alabama playing Texas A and M at Kyle Field, that, yeah, they've I mean, given they them no, problems, I mean, real problems, real problems in the past two years. Yeah. and they didn't really have any. Haynes, they had uh, Haynes King for both of them. And well, no, one was. Um, oh yeah, the Zach Calzada. Zach Calzada is at D two school now. Yeah, he is at Incarnate Word. He yeah, the he's probably going to. Yeah. He's probably going to go for like five thousand yards this year because Incarnate yeah. Word is like an well, explosive I mean, quarterbacks. Uh-huh. Is that Calzada and Haynes King have yeah. been Aaron Rodgers and Tom Brady when yeah. they play against South? Sway to Connor so Wigman. Connor Wigman. And he's actually good. I, he's much better than both yeah, of those. Yeah, he is. He is much better. Haynes King is not. I mean, Haynes King good. didn't even play good against Alvin yeah. and they somehow had a really chance. Oh, wait. Who's the uh, uh, receiver they have on their team is good? Oh, I forgot that dude's name. Oh, yeah. Evan Stewart. Evan Stewart. Yeah, yeah, that dude's a beast. Yeah, he is a beast. He was he's a true pro- He's trying. Too. Yeah, he's still on the a He didn't end up transferring. No. Nope. He's probably one of the best. Yeah, yeah, I agree for sure. And then last but not least, Vandy, the Harvard of the South here. I got Vandy line at three and a half. Over. Um, they are non-conference is Hawaii, Alabama A&M, at Wake Forest, and at UNLV. And out of the West, they have at Ole Miss 
and Auburn at home. Yeah, over for sure. I, I mean, I think that they dropped to Wake Forest, but, you know, they'll take Hawaii, Alabama, and m and uh, UNLV fairly three wins. Fairly that means they won an SEC game. I mean, they won against the, Florida last year. They, I mean, they could beat any of those. I mean, they could beat Kentucky or Missouri. I mean, Kentucky will be harder, but I think they beat Missouri or yeah. or Auburn. or. And they got better with Clark Lee. Clark Lee. Been beating Auburn. That would be I funny. Love, I, could, I, could, I, could, I could totally see them beating I'm Auburn. A, I'm going to go over amazing. Just because I do not want to see any SEC teams <laughs> under three wins. The funny thing I just recognized or realized about um, Vanderbilt, sorry, is that their bye is week yeah. twelve. They have a week twelve <laughs> bye. No yeah. joke. They play, they, they all play games. eleven games. They have two buys. Oh, they do. They do. Sorry. Okay, they have two buys. All I right. Guess they I didn't find so, another game. Oh, yet. it's because they play Hawaii. They yeah, play Hawaii yeah, yeah. the week. Okay, so they play week Hawaii week zero. I was yeah. tripping there for a second. I remember I, last year and I was, I was a must tune in game. There is just oh, no. Wow. I was thinking there is just no way they play eleven games, have a yeah. buy, and then play Tennessee. That is hilarious. That's good that they have two buys. Yeah. And so the, oh, I mean, so potential Vanderbilt getting some help this year. Yeah. Yeah. Sneak three into a bowl game. Three, I think they're going to be three and one. They can maybe pull up Wake Forest. Wake Forest is going to be a new at quarterback. They, they don't I have mean, Sam Hartman. That first Wake, four names, just, uh, who knows? We might have a ranked yeah. Vanderbilt football no, team. I mean, no. <laughs> four and oh, and, I mean, you got to get number 25. You know, who, they had a good – Other receiving votes. They still have that uh, – I wonder if they saw that running back. That running back was very really good for them. Yeah. And they got brand new facilities. Yeah, they're I mean, back. Oh, they're yeah, they're they're back. Brand new back. <laughs> they're gonna are they win the five back games? Back what? <laughs> Alabama, yeah. you're next. Oh man, they're gonna turn into their baseball program and just yeah. win the the Natty in two years. Yeah, I I, am I think gonna they go. go over I'm there. gonna go over just because, like y'all said, like I think they got Hawaii, Alabama, A and M, and UNLV. I think it's just a matter of winning one SEC game, and I think that'll be – I think they'll win against Missouri, maybe. Like, they'll just sneak one against Missouri, maybe Auburn if they're lucky. Uh, yeah, good job, Vandy. Um, all right, so we have time for a little bit more here. We're going to do our most overrated and most, most underrated teams next. We're going to hit this pretty quick. Uh, most overrated, I am going with Tennessee. I think they've gotten a lot of hype. I, it was close between them and LSU. I think they've gotten a lot of hype close to the top 10 range. I don't think people realize that even though Joe Milton has a lot of potential, he's not as good as Hendon Hooker is. And that wide receiver core is not near as good as it was last year. That was one of the better wide receiving cores they probably had ever. Um, I think Tennessee does regress a a little bit more than people think they will. Uh, I don't think they're severely overrated, but I do think they're the most overrated team in the SEC next year. I'm going to have to – say your other team you mentioned i think lsu is a little bit more overrated than tennessee just because people are they made it to the sec championship they beat alabama they they just they have that like in people's minds they're seeing lsu as a possible like 11 win team like i know plenty of people lsu is going to win the west which which they might again i mean they did it uh they might but i think that they are more overrated because of what their schedule has i can yeah. easily see them dropping three games my most overrated i'm gonna agree with Caden. i'm gonna go tennessee just because they're not gonna have hen and hooker and they're not gonna have i mean cedric tillman Jalen hyatt they're not they're gonna have a pretty much whole new offense and i think yeah most overrated tennessee all right underrated for me i have arkansas I really – I kind of like this Arkansas team. I think that their defense is a little bit questionable. But with K.J. Jefferson coming back, Rocket Sanders coming back, uh, that's their offense right there. Yeah. They're just going to be running the ball, and I think they'll be good at that, very good at that. I wouldn't be surprised if, if Arkansas squeaks out 8-4 and four this year. And that being said, I, I could also see them maybe, at best-case scenario, being the third-best team in the West. Best-case scenario this year being third-best team in the that's West. That's if they – if they that's it. Uh, if the a game in Arlington goes their way, exactly. Yeah, and uh, Arkansas is a great pick, but I'm gonna go Ole Miss on this one. I'm high on them. They have Spencer Sanders, who's probably gonna get it over Jackson Dart, and then Judkins is just so good on the ground. Their defensive improvements over the off season are gonna help them a lot. I think Ole Miss is a little bit better than people are thinking. They might be, you know, in the same situation, eight and four, nine and three at best, third. Third place in the West is the best that they could do. But third place in the West, nine wins, eight wins, that's a that's a good season. 
um, especially if they can pull one out against Alabama or LSU. I'm going Texas and them as my most underrated team because they've been getting like yeah. they've been getting no no talk at all at, after last year, De- deservedly so because they were hyped up way too much last year, and I think. Jimbo, they're going to have, I mean, motivational factor because nobody's talking about them. And I think they're going to go 9-3, 10-2. They're going to be top three in the West, maybe top two. I think they could maybe climb over LSU because, I mean, they beat them last year. I think they could beat them this year too. All right. And moving on, we have our top three SEC games of the year. Um, How about we each give one? You guys sound good? Yeah, yeah. Sound good? All right. uh, My personal pick, I really like LSU and Alabama. Uh, facing off again big rematch um, of last year with the dramatic finish um, I think this is going to be a really good game in Bryant Denny this year I'm I cannot wait to go to that game it's going to be sweet um, I, I like Alabama in it but I do think that it'll be a battle I think it'll be a really another classic between these two rivals um, I'm going to have to go with the game that I was I sat through four hours <laughs> in the Tennessee sun and one hour in the Tennessee night and then three dreadful hours in traffic in Knoxville going back going to play Tennessee at home gosh I just I cannot wait to just watch our entire stadium be lit up with cigar smoke that that game is just it means so much more to me now that I went all the way to Knoxville and watched us lose in heartbreaking fashion and uh yeah that's I'm just I cannot wait to go step inside Brian Denny and just be a rowdy Bama fan for four hours and give Tennessee fans what they gave to us. Yeah, that'd be nice. I'm I'm gonna go I'm gonna keep it out of Alabama. I'm gonna go Tennessee, Georgia. I think I wanted to say Tennessee, Georgia, but like I think Tennessee is going I think Tennessee is gonna give Georgia it's gonna be a very close game. I mean Tennessee fans haven't seen George, Tennessee being Georgia in a while. No. And they're, I mean, just like with Alabama last year, they were hungry. They're going to have that place probably checkered. That's going to be their checker out. And they are going to win, or their orange out. I mean, whatever one, they're going to go all out. It's going to be insane. Peyton Manning, the curse is lifted. He's going to be able to go to the game, and they're going to win the game. Joe Milton's probably going <laughs> to have some deep passes. They're going to figure it out. Especially it helps when it's late in the years that they're going to have their receivers figured out. They're going to have everybody figured out, hopefully. So will Georgia. Yeah, it's true. So yeah, yeah I guess coaching. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Josh Heupel's got to pull one out against Tennessee yeah, against Georgia because yeah, I'd S- love to see it. You got to pull it out it. if you can pull it out against Alabama. And Tennessee fans are going to love him even more. I, if he can I don't know who against. I dislike more, Tennessee or Georgia, when it really comes down to it. Oh, Tennessee. So, easily, easily. Yeah, Tennessee. but I want I want to see easily Tennessee, Tennessee beat Georgia though. Yeah, it, would, it would just make me Tennessee, like. But Tennessee stretches across all sports. So I'd yeah, go to bed so easily if I watched Tennessee beat Georgia. Yeah. Like, I would be able to sleep for weeks yeah. with no problem knowing that Georgia lost to Tennessee. Yeah. yeah. Um, games with the most upset potential will each give one here. I like South Carolina at Georgia Week 3. Although it's in Athens, I think this is going to be really early in the year. Wouldn't even be surprised to see Georgia still on their uh, maybe 2QB system trying to figure out who's going to be their guy for the future. I think South Carolina – has their guy figured out and Spencer Rattler they may start the year off hot with a big win against uh, UNC Georgia doesn't really have like an early season test so this is their real first real game South Carolina does have that early season test before Georgia I I I don't I'm not picking South Carolina to win this game but it'll be a lot closer than what a lot of people expect and I promise whatever the spread is they'll cover it for this game mine will be a surprise yeah this is a Man, the the most upset potential. I mean, there's part of me that wants to say the Iron Bowl. That's what I was going to say. And there's part of me that wants to say uh, Georgia-Auburn. And there's part of me that – I mean, if I had to pick one that has the most upset potential in conference, I think Florida-LSU. Yep. That could be a good one. I think Florida at – on the road, LSU beat them on the road. I think LSU is going to go in there thinking uh, they got it all locked out at Death Valley, but uh, but Florida is going to be hungry to get that game that they blew so heartbreakingly uh, not that long ago. 
I'm going to go with the Iron Bull. I know this team too well. Every time going <laughs> to Auburn, it's going to be a hard fall game. Points. That's right. Yep. And I think this would be saving fourth time in a row beating Auburn. I don't think, I don't think that's happening. I think Auburn's going to win the game. Some way, somehow, it always happens. It'll be close. I think we don't need that negativity here. Nick. It'll be negativity. Yeah. yeah, it could happen. I I don't think it will, but uh, I mean, yeah. I, as just an depending. Unbiased college football fan, yeah, I hundred yeah. percent agree. Um, and as an biased college football fan, I look, also know how it goes. Look, they had Brian Harson and they was Brian Harson was an um, it was four overtime four overtimes against Nick Saban. They have a ten times better coach. Yeah. All right, moving on because we're about to wrap it up here. Um, we're gonna do, do some, some, some speed. Let's do let's do award predictions real quick. Uh, we're gonna do offensive player of the year, defensive player of the year, and then our, our pick for a breakout player of the year. Um, I offensive player of the year. I like Jaden Daniels. I think this is an offense that's really catered for him. I think he's got yep. weapons. I think they're going to be a very high powered offensive team. I think he's going to be able to throw the ball. And I wouldn't even be surprised if he's one of their leading rushers, maybe even their leading rusher. I think they'll let him play, let him do his own thing. I like Jaden Daniels winning offensive player of the year in the SEC. I'm, go- I'm going to go. Jaden Daniels is a good one. Milton's a good one. Go Cox, baby. Spencer <laughs> Rattler yes. is going to get the Offensive Player of the Year. I, I do think that he is going to have a breakout season. Last year, really, I guess you could argue was a breakout season. This year, maybe. Even better. Even better. Maybe even Heisman is finalist it, season. This is his draft year. He's got to go He's got off. to. Yeah. I mean, if he, if he wants so to be in Detroit next year. Yeah. Same for Daniels, though. Yeah. I mean, both these guys draft years. Yep. I mean, Devin Leary, I mean, this could be his year to get back in the top 15. That's I'm going to go with – I'm going to stick with Braden and go with Spencer Rattler. All right. Spence. Spurs up. <laughs> Spurs up. Yeah. All right. Uh, defensive player of the year. I was thinking Dallas Turner. That's something. Um, but I've done done my research, done my uh, due diligence. Um, I like Michael Williams from Georgia. He was a former five star. He's going to be going into his sophomore year. He's a really great edge rusher. Has great technique off the edge. He's not. I wouldn't be surprised if he has like a Will Anderson type sophomore year. That's how good I think he is. Um, he's pretty nimble and fast, and he's not the biggest guy, but. He was absolutely manhandling um, left tackles for both TCU and Ohio State. He he can put guys yeah. on their back, and he can beat them with speed. I think Michael Williams yes, is a beast for is, Georgia. He is a beast, but I think the safer option here is old reliable. I think Dallas Turner, I mean, he's good enough to play in the NFL now. Um, he's coming back another year. Defensive player of the year, the safe option in my mind is Dallas Turner. I do oh. I, know. I think with the addition yeah, of Kevin know, Steele, he's going to blitz Dallas Turner more. Dallas Turner dropped yeah. into coverage way too much. For and, and that's not what he, yeah, year. he's more of a of a Fred Warner type of guy who stays good blocking the run and, and rushing the quarterback. And Yeah. I'm going, wait, let me see this real quick. Make sure. Did he switch to number? They don't have him at number seven. I'm going with... Uh, Perkins, Harold, uh, Harold Perkins. Perkins at LSU. I think he was so good last year, and I think he's going to have a big year for LSU. I think he might be the – I don't think he can be, but he might be the number seven. I think he could be the where the infamous number seven for LSU because he is that good. I mean, that would be as a sophomore. And he had such a big year. I mean, I think Dallas Turner could put up what Will Anderson put up in the 2021 season and win it. And I think it's up between them two. For sure. Because Will Anderson, I mean, Dallas Turner probably won't be, I mean, main, he'll be the main vocal point, but I think he can still do it. Maybe if it's a DB that has to win it, I think Denver Harris or Kool Aid could win yeah, it. Yeah, Kool Aid. He could, had a yeah. lot of INT opportunities. Yeah. For sure. And then breakout players, I've mentioned him a few times already today. I like Malik Neighbors out of LSU. I think he's got the best quarterback in the SEC with Jaden Daniels, and he'll be the number one target for that LSU team. Malik Neighbors is a really physical wide receiver who can also beat you with speed. Uh, I mean, the guy is just a unit. He's a tank. I like Malik Neighbors. He reminds me a lot of A.J. Brown. Yeah, I, Malik Neighbors is good. I think one guy – that I mean, we never really saw much from the Alabama receivers last year, but Ja'Cory Brooks kind of at the end of the year started picking it up. I think this year, it's last year. Um, I want to stick because I just don't know enough about other teams at this point. I think the safe pick for me at this point is to say that um, that he has a breakout year. Although I could see 
as well as like Spencer Sanders is very good and is acknowledged very good. SEC first year in the SEC, I could see him having a very good year as well. I'm gonna go with breakout player. I'm gonna go Evan Stewart. Evan Stewart, he's, he was a good out of Texas A&M. He was good last yeah. year, but he's going to be even better this year. They're going to have a better quarterback. The ball is going to be – they were – when Wigman was playing, I think the, he, they were going at him every single time, and I think he's going to get the ball a lot more because A-Chain's not there. And I Smith, he – I think he he, had, he got hurt last year, but he's going to have – he's going to get the rock, but I think it's going to be them too, splitting, uh, splitting the ball. Yeah. And um, – Right quick before we wrap it up, guys, everybody do SEC championship game prediction right now. Pick your SEC championship winner and the loser. I like Bama and Georgia, by the way. I think yeah. you see yeah, a think situation similar to 2021. Yeah. I think it'll be a similar situation to 2021. Um, I mean, I just I can't pick between that those two teams. The Bama fan in me is just going to pick Bama. Um, but at this point, we don't know enough about us or Georgia to say that one or the other is going to beat each other in a head-to-head matchup on a yeah. neutral well, side. I think I think Georgia goes in twelve and zero. Bama goes in eleven and one, and Bama needs yeah. to win to get in the playoffs. Bama wins. It's the same, yeah. But I think oh, it could, I think Alabama could be ten and two going in. I think I think, think it'd be, be Alabama and Georgia. Yeah, yeah, I yeah, think I'm a, since I said Georgia. Yeah, since yeah. I said push and push for Alabama ten and two. I'm. Uh, ten and a half. Actually, I said under. Yeah. We could ten, see a ten, ten and two, two Bama team going against yeah, eleven if, and one Georgia, or and then, twelve and zero. Yeah, eleven and one or twelve and zero Georgia, or eleven and zero Georgia. I'm gonna say 10 11 one. And one. Yeah, eleven. They, they're losing. They have it, no way. <laughs> there's no yeah. way. There's no way it hits on red this many but, times in a row. You know, I mean, I think yeah. I, I think a two loss team. If that were the case, if Alabama was ten and two in Georgia, I think a two loss team would most definitely be in the playoffs. Yeah. All right, 